Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm so glad to have with me today, Alan Peake. Alan, we got to talk to you at the Capitol, I think, last year or year before, and I always appreciate you taking time, yeah. and, and this definitely took some time to drive down from Macon, but it's about a uh, topic that you're very passionate about. Mm -hmm. I'll have to say that, mm -hmm. and in talking with Matt Hatchett, our local state representative, we wanted to get you down and, and just educate me and everybody else about this medical marijuana. And uh, I understand it's House Bill 1. How did that happen, House well, Bill 1? <laughs> well, well, the, the, the story is we, we attempted to pass some medical cannabis legislation last year, uh, we chatted about. Uh, it failed, and uh, and it became such a issue throughout the state of people going, this is ridiculous. This, this legislation that would have helped kids, would have helped citizens in our state, failed because of political gamemanship. Um, the Speaker of the House, when we got back to this session this year, said, you know what, I want that to be HB1. I want it to, have, to show the state, to show the legislature, to our colleagues that this is an issue that is a priority for us to work on this year. And you mentioned fail last year. Uh, as I remember, it was like 10 till 12 or mm -hmm. something. You know, it, it was, was that last, and you're fighting to the bitter end, it, I know. It, it, it what was. happened? Well, um, the short story is uh, we, had a, we built up a lot of momentum uh, about the medical cannabis legislation. Uh, a senator attached a, uh, another piece of legislation, a completely different set of le uh, legislation uh, regarding uh, autism. And as a result of that, it got, back, got bogged down in some kind of gamemanship back and forth between the House and the Senate and, and, and a tragically failed, uh, really, it, literally at the last minute, uh, right before midnight on the last day last year. And you've traveled all over the, I guess, all over the state of Georgia, yeah. having here and right? Yeah. I have. We, we, as a result of that, of it failing, we created the Medical Cannabis Study Committee, which was charged with, okay, find out, one, do we need a medical cannabis program in our state? Uh, is there a desire for it? Is the public opinion there? And uh, and, and we found out that, that resoundingly, yes, um, citizens in our state want a medical cannabis program that is safe, regulated, uh, limited uh, to uh, certain diagnoses and, uh, and in a non-smokable form. And so the Medical Cannabis Committee uh, went marching out to locations all over the um, state and chatted with law enforcement to see what issues they had. Mm -hmm. uh, we kind of put it to them like this. If it's the public policy of this state to move forward with a medical cannabis program, what issues, how can we provide safeguards to make sure that you, uh, the concerns you have are addressed? Uh, we chatted with the medical community. We chatted with citizens with various different diagnoses to see, well, maybe we ought to extend this uh, beyond just kids with seizure disorders. Maybe there's a potential therapeutic benefit for other citizens. And, uh, and so we learned a lot from this uh, study committee. And I believe we're gonna, it's going to help us have a better bill uh, uh, that's, that can be more effective here in Georgia. I don't know what you're hearing at these hearings, but I want you to comment on this. What I hear uh, being the television station traveling all over our area, people in Lawrence County and surrounding counties do not, as a whole, I hear this everywhere I go, I just heard it before I met you now, uh, they're scared that if this passes, then mar legalizing marijuana is right around the corner. And, the, and the, the majority of the people in this area do not want to legalize marijuana. Right. What's your comment well, on that? Well, and I've heard that, and I have that same concern. Uh, I, I don't want us to go down a slippery slope of uh, eventually legalizing marijuana for recreational use. In fact, I've said it publicly, I'll say it right now. I will fight with as much passion and energy to make sure that uh, marijuana is not legalized for recreational purposes as I'm fighting for these kids to have access to cannabis oil. That's not the public policy decision uh, and path that we want to go for our state. People need to understand that this medical cannabis oil is uh, very high in CBD, has elevated levels of CBD, which is the therapeutic part of the cannabis plant, and very low levels of THC, which is the psychoactive or the part that makes you high. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, in fact, this cannabis oil that's been used with kids uh, is known out in Colorado as hippie's disappointment because there's no high effect mm -hmm. to it. You can't get high off of it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so folks need to realize that that's the path we're going down is we're looking for cannabis oil, non-smoking, you can't smoke it, um, for a limited amount of diagnosis with a limited amount of THC. I'm reading stories, and I know you, uh, Marlo Smith, uh, the young girl, and I know you've been involved with that family, but not only her, but reading about stories throughout the country. Uh, 
A lot of people have moved to Colorado. Mm -hmm. I, I know in the thousands of families, some mm -hmm. separated families. Mm -hmm. uh, as in her case, her daddy having to stay in Gwinnett County and, and practice. Uh, he's a physician, and the mom and the daughter having to go out there. But story after story where kids, this just blows my mind, having 20, 25, 30 seizures a day. I cannot grasp that in a 24-hour period. And then once they get this medical marijuana, maybe one every three or four days. Yeah. That's enough for me to vote for it. It is. And, and the, the story of how I got involved with this um, issue, it's, it's interesting. A year ago at this time, I had a reporter from WMAZ call me and say, <laughs> what, what, what do you think is going to be happening about medical marijuana? And, uh, and I told them, there's no way on earth this legislature will even touch or consider any medical marijuana legislation. Mm -hmm. And about a couple of days later, I got an email from a friend <laughs> who said, you need to talk to this mom who has a four-year-old daughter who's having a couple hundred seizures a day. They're looking at moving to Colorado. So I told the lady, I said, ask the mom to email me. The mom emailed me and said, I wish you'd check into this. I sent her an email back and said, well, why don't you, like I do with a lot of people who call me, why don't you contact your state representative and ask them um, see if they'll get involved and push it. And she, 30 seconds after I sent that email, I got a response bank saying, well, I just did that. You are my state representative. And uh, so I thought, you know what, I might better check into yeah, this a I little bit more. Yeah. And as I did, I, I began to learn their story. A mom with a four-year-old little girl who was going to have to move to Colorado without their husband. She's going to have to leave her job, leave their support network, leave their church, leave all their friends mm. to go 1,400 miles to get access to cannabis oil that it was having and showing significant positive effects for kids with seizure disorders. And so it, it, it got me that, okay, I, this is something I need to really dig into and, and find out more. Then I met the little girl, little four-year-old Haley Cox, who lives in Monroe County um, in my district. And when I met her, uh, it was the only way I can describe it as a, as a it touched me very deep in my soul um, because it, I realized, mm. and it hit me, that if this was my daughter, yep. I have a four-year-old granddaughter, mm. this was my granddaughter, yep. uh, that I would move heaven and earth, Amen. crawl over gr broken glass to be able to, uh, for, the, for that child to have access to, to medical cannabis. So that, that set me on a mission that, you know what? I'm going to do whatever it takes uh, to be able to pass legislation to let, to let citizens and families make the personal choice of what's in the best interest uh, in conjunction with their physician of what's in the best interest for their child or for themselves. And, uh, and I can't say enough about Matt Hatchett. You know, he's a good friend of mine, um, Absolutely. Representative Matt Hatchett from this area, good friend of mine. But he, he, he supported this effort from the very get-go when there were a lot of people who were going, whoa, I'm not sure you ought to do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, he showed a lot of courage and stood up yeah. um, on this issue when a lot of people didn't. Yeah, and you just listened to you describe that. You went from, like a lot of people and myself, you went from uneducated Alan Peake, who I, there's no way, don't even talk to me about it, mm -hmm. to educated Alan Peake. Once you dug in there and found out the facts. That's right. Not just marijuana, mm -hmm. because that's a negative. We right. know that. We're not for drugs. Right. But, and once you got educated. Right. The, the, the personal side of the story is what connected with me. Once it becomes personal to you, once mm -hmm. anybody knows somebody who's affected by these seizure yeah. disorders, oh, yeah. and uh, that, that's when it really trans transforms yeah. you. And so that's what we've done. We started on the path of educating folks that, uh, that, that you know, this is a personal story. This is, uh, this is providing relief and hope for families and for citizens in our state. And, uh, and it's not, not smoking. We had to convince people that, and, and, and make sure they knew that we weren't allow, we're about, we're not about to allow six-year-olds to start smoking no, weed. No, <laughs> we weren't going right. to have pot shops on every street that's corner. Right. We we're going to be California where you can go on the beach and get a prescription right there and say you have a headache yeah. uh, and get marijuana for it. That's not the path we're yeah. going down with HB1. Thank goodness for that. Okay, and, and the flip side of this is... Uh, uh, prescription uh, pills, medicine, is one of the biggest problems I see in this area and all through the state of Georgia and throughout this land. And every 19 minutes, somebody overdoses and dies in the United States from oxycodone or morphine or some, some kind of painkiller because it's, it's just so abused. Well, I can't find a case, correct me if I'm wrong, I can't find a case anywhere. And I look, I read all kind of journals, not just the United States, throughout the world. I can't find any case where someone overdosed and died 
from marijuana. That, that, that is correct. There has not been a recorded case of that, uh, not anywhere. Prescription drug use and, uh, and overdose from prescription drug use is, is actually, I think, the number one killer among um, young young adults and teenagers. Mm-hmm. And um, and so that, that that doesn't stop us from prescribing those prescription drugs to our population. Why should we uh, stop? providing medical cannabis mm. to our citizens just because we're fearful that it's going to be abused. Will it be abused? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a black market now for marijuana. You can mm-hmm. go to any street in, in any city in our right. state right now yeah. and buy it now. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's not going to stop. But So why should we preclude the m- medicinal benefits that could come uh, from cannabis uh, because we're fearful of what could be, a, uh, be a potentially abused? Jump in the bill, House okay. Bill 1, just a little more. How will it be transported? Where will it go? What, will you have clinics? Will yeah. it be doctor? Uh, okay. Tell us how that works. Okay. I, 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 th- there are two objectives in HB1. Uh, one is to bring Georgia families back home. Um, those that have had to leave our state for medical uh, cannabis elsewhere. So, so, so there'll be a protection from prosecution for possession in the short term uh, for families that have had to leave our state uh, if they want to take the risk of obtain it legally in another state and come back to Georgia, once they get inside our borders, they won't be subject to prosecution mm-hmm. uh, or worry about defects showing up at their doorstep taking their kid away. The second uh, phase of the bill and the second mission of the bill is to provide a safe, effective, and timely regulatory structure for the growing, processing, and selling, retailing, of uh, cannabis oil to our citizens for a limited amount of diagnosis. So the way it would work is uh, uh, we will license uh, probably up to five or six growers, processors, and retailers. Um, make sure we have it limited so that law enforcement doesn't have to go mm-hmm. uh, to every farm all over the state. Uh, they'll, they'll know exactly who is licensed to grow and process this product. Uh, and so it'll be a limited, limited to that. It'll also be limited to certain diagnoses. So you as a citizen, uh, if you have one of the qualifying di- diagnoses, uh, would go to a qualified physician, not just any physician, someone who is qualified to do this and has passed the training to do this, that, that doctor would write a, write a recommendation for you showing you do have the diagnosis. Mm-hmm. You would take that to that written documentation to the Department of Public Health, and you would be given a registration card saying that you are registered to receive medical cannabis oil in our state. You would then go to the retail center, um, that would probably be geographically uh, dispersed throughout the state, and you would go there. You could not obtain the cannabis oil without the registration card, you, and at that point you would be able to access the cannabis mm-hmm. oil. So and this is a two, two-pronged two question here. So it's not going to be, which I, I want you to tell me, these methadone clinics, mm-hmm. it's not going to be like that, is it? Yeah, no, uh, no. Where you just walk in and, and you know, because we've got them all over the state right. of Georgia, you know, this right. this. That's really not good. Right, right, no, we want to make sure that not anyone, mm-hmm. no one can just walk into a retail center, cannabis care center, right. where we're trying to find the term, um, and purchase the cannabis oil. Mm-hmm. You would have to be registered with the state after you've gotten a recommendation from a qualified physician. We want to make sure that it's strictly regulated, uh, highly restricted to those citizens that really deserve it, uh, need it, and can benefit uh, therapeutically from it. Okay, tell me about Marlo Smith. Okay, sure. Uh, we, Marlo Smith is the, I think she's eight years old, uh, daughter of uh, Jay Smith, who is an ER physician in Gwinnett County. Um, he is on the Medical Association of Georgia board. So this is a prominent physician in our state. Uh, he's also the dad of a daughter who has epilepsy. And um, he, he came and approached us a year ago and said, well, I want to get involved in this effort. Um, we want to pass this legislation because if not, we're going to look at moving to go into Colorado uh, for Marlo, for the daughter. Uh, we failed in the legislation. He uprooted his, he and his wife and five children, moved to Colorado, uh, and Marlo started on the cannabis oil in July, I believe. She was uh, having drop seizures, which is, which which are seizures not that um, that make you fall asleep, just mm-hmm. make you just drop on the floor anywhere, wherever mm-hmm. you might be, and. Uh, and they started in July, and after some quick tweaking with the dosage, have seen remarkable results. Um, same same thing, redu- significant reduction in seizure activity, uh, significant improvement in cognitive ability, and uh, and I mean, he, he, last week I had never met his wife 
and his wife came to the state capitol having been out in Colorado for, for, for four months with their daughter. She came up to me and gave me the most intense hug I have ever gotten because she was so grateful that we were working to pass legislation to bring their family home mm. for medicine that was working for her daughter. And uh, so to those who say, who say, you know, boy, there hadn't been enough clinical trial process. This is, uh, you know, we're worried about this. We're scared about this. All you need to do is talk to any one of these families that have moved to Colorado or another state and have seen the unbelievable <clears throat> positive benefit for their children, and you'll be convinced after that. Uh, that's got to be, to know you're working for, to help families like mm -hmm. that personally, it's got to be rewarding. It, it? it has been. I, you know, listen, we do a lot of really good stuff at the Capitol. We, we pass tax legislation. Mm -hmm. We pass insurance reform. We pass criminal justice reform. Mm -hmm. We pass banning texting while driving. Stuff that impacts uh, people's daily life. I, I get that. But this is the first time I've ever been involved in legislation that I knew was really impacting the quality of life for a multitude of our citizens. And it's, and it's driven me... To the point that, you know what, I, don't, I could care less what this does to me politically. If, if it cuts me off of the knees and I never have a career in politics because of this, yeah. or if I get booted out of office next term because of this, I, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Because this is, this is going to change the trajectory of the lives of so many of our citizens. And for that, it's worth every bit. It's, it's become definitely the highest calling of my political life and, and ranks right up there with uh, uh, some of the most important things in my life. And is this, uh, how's the vote going to come down? Is this a party line thing? Do you have support from both sides of the aisle? I, I, I do. It's interesting where we've gotten the most pushback on this bill has been in the faith-based community. Hmm. Um, and, it, and it usually goes along the lines of, is there someone from their congregation who who personally has experienced the benefits of this. Mm -hmm. if, if that's the case, then the congregation or the, or the organization is behind it. If not, um, a lot of the faith-based organizations have said, we're not going to support this because it's a slippery slope. They're just going moving toward mm -hmm. recreational use of marijuana. Uh, we're not going to support it. And so that's been frustrating because, quite frankly, I think the faith-based community ought to be the ones leading the charge on this. Mm -hmm. This is a compassion issue. Amen, this brother. is a human issue, yes. personal issue. And, uh, and so I'm hoping uh, that there'll be some hearts and minds changed on that as well, too. And uh, Matt Hatchett, you mentioned him a little while ago. He's one of my best friends, mm -hmm. both of our dear friends, mm -hmm. and a, one of the finest Christian mm -hmm. men that I know. Mm -hmm. And if he's behind this, that's all I need to mm -hmm. know personally, mm -hmm. even though I've done my research and read about it. There's, mm -hmm. you, you need to be educated. But that tells me in our community, that tells us a lot right there. It, it does. And, there, and a lot of our colleagues, like Matt, have come to that same conclusion. It only had four negative votes in the entire House chamber last year. It had, it had zero negative votes in the Senate. Mm -hmm. And so th there's, there's a tremendous amount of support for it among my colleagues. Uh, we want to make sure we get it right, make sure it's a safe product, make sure it's regulated, make sure it's for limited diagnosis, make sure it's not smoking. Um, the, other, the other thing I'd add, you know, it, 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 as much as this is a human and personal story, it's also a state's rights issue. You know, Georgia ought to control its own destiny. We ought not be waiting on a dysfunctional federal government to come up with a solution, or we shouldn't be waiting for other states around us to mm -hmm. come up with a solution so that our citizens can leave to go there. We, we as elected leaders of our state ought to be smart enough to come up with a solution that works for our citizens. And I believe that's what's going to happen in HB1. Why did you uh, elect to go this way versus, say, the state of Florida who tried to amend their constitution? Mm -hmm. And, of course, in Florida you have to have a supermajority. I think they fell three votes short mm -hmm. last year mm -hmm. of that supermajority with an amendment. Why did you choose to go this way versus Florida? We felt like that, uh, particularly uh, now, uh, when there is so much skepticism and so much concern, that we need to make sure we wrote the law uh, with a regulatory structure uh, that was safe, effective, and legal according to the Justice Department's guidelines as well, too. And so, um, and we also wanted to move quickly. If we were to try and move a referendum, it, it couldn't even go on the ballot until 2016, and then would have to take another year or so to be implemented. Mm -hmm. That's three okay. years from now. In the six months since we ended session March 20th, three children have died. Uh, three kids who 
roamed the halls of the Capitol with their families mm -hmm. begging us to act. If we wait another three years, how many more kids will die? Yeah. And so w we felt like the, the best response was to come up with a safe uh, regulatory structure that we could put in place now so we could get as access to the cannabis oil as quickly as possible to families in Georgia. Okay, last question, okay. totally off this. Um, when I'm at the Capitol, one thing I love about the state of Georgia, y'all seem as a whole, the legislature and the Senate, to really have camaraderie, good fellowship, seem to like each other, and get and, and we get things done in the mm -hmm. state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. What would you recommend to the folks in Washington to change and maybe do business more like we do in the state of Georgia? Well, I, I think that you'll see that most of my colleagues who are – uh, citizen legislators. Well, most of us work yeah. and have full-time jobs in our community. Um, I, I think we know and get and understand the struggles that our citizens face. And so, therefore, we're compelled to work to resolve those problems for our citizens because we're there right next to you at ball games mm -hmm. on Friday night or we're on the chamber, local chamber, uh, on the Kiwanis Club or Rotary Club. Um, the folks that have gone to Washington and I don't think I'll ever be one of them, I don't think, um, um, you know, have full-time jobs as politicians. Mm -hmm. And I get it. That's, that's, mm -hmm. But you, it makes you wonder that if all of a sudden maybe we went to the same model that we have in Georgia, which is citizen legislators, mm -hmm. uh, what a difference that would make if those folks who are up in Washington making decisions had to come here and actually work and, and live, and by live the laws. laws that they just made. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a difference that would make. Absolutely. So. Alan Pete, thank you so much. You bet, James. I appreciate it. You bet. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.